This week was a wild one in the Saskatchewan legislature, so let's talk about it. As this week, instead of SAS Party Corruption, I'm bringing you a different special segment. SAS Party Dysfunction. ba 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 da ba 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 da ba da You see, the Saskatchewan government is hopelessly inept. They are destroying the province in basically every way they can think of. And all they really have is attacks and distraction. But there's another layer here. It's not just that they take and keep power, it's that they feel entitled to it. They feel entitled to their positions, entitled to their impunity, and entitled to their arrogance. And I think that was really on display last week when Jeremy Harrison was asked by the Speaker of the House to withdraw and apologize for referring to somebody as lying, which is considered unparliamentary. I'll let the clip speak for itself. I would ask the Minister of Trade and Export Development uh, for the use of the word lie. You know very well you can't do indirectly what you're not allowed to directly. Please uh, stand up and withdraw and apologize. Uh, withdraw and apologize. Stand up, please. Don't slouch <gasps> with disrespect of the stand institution. Stand up. Withdraw and apologize. Recognize the member. The facial expression on Harrison's face is perhaps the funniest thing I've ever seen. He looks astonished that someone would have the gall to tell him what to do. He looks like a kid whose babysitter told him he couldn't have ice cream for breakfast. So the speaker who admonished him here is a guy named Randy Weeks. And before you get too excited about what a great speaker Randy is, he's been doing this for a while now, and he's largely let the Saskatchewan legislature devolve into a mess. It's basically been an endless barrage of nonsense and crosstalk. Nobody follows the rules. Nobody answers questions. And it's been disgraceful. But recently, Randy's decided to turn up the heat on the Sask party. And if you're wondering why, the answer is pretty obvious. He's got nothing to lose. He's been the speaker for four years now, but this year will be his last, as he lost a contested nomination in his riding. So he had been previously running in a pretty safe riding. And then when riding boundaries were redrawn, he went to what he believed was the most winnable riding and lost. So he's deciding to try to leave himself with at least a few shreds of dignity on his way out the door by trying to reinstate a bit of order in the house. But you see, his attempt to reinstate order didn't just stop there. And neither did him humiliating Jeremy Harrison. And Jeremy Harrison absolutely deserves it. He is the single most poorly behaved member of the Saskatchewan legislature. And that's really saying something. He's the House leader, and he's constantly heckling, constantly yelling. And the last time that I was in the House, the entire time that opposition leader Carla Beck was trying to speak, he would just yell, Carla who? Carla who? The entire time. It's not even that he's just a terrible corrupt politician. He's also a jerk. He's constantly heckling and insulting and never answers questions. He just attacks. But that won't stop him from going on very expensive trips. He loves doing that on the taxpayer dollar. Big fan of living large on our dime. But he'll cut all the funding for everything else. It's his way. The other character that I'm going to show you in this clip is Finance Minister and Deputy Premier Donna Hartpower. You see, she's been quite bothered that the Saskatchewan NDP have been pushing in the House for answers about incredibly corrupt dealings with MLA Gary Graywall. His hotels received almost $800,000 of taxpayer funds, and the party doesn't really like answering questions about that. So in order to try to put a stop to that, Donna Harpower decided to text the Speaker of the House during the legislative session, and Randy Weeks took offense to it. Just look at this clip. He's furious. His hands are shaking as he reads. The has moved to adjourn debate. It's a pleasure of assembly to adopt the motion. Just while I'm on my feet, I have, as Speaker, I have received literally hundreds and hundreds of text messages from the, the government house leader, the deputy government house leader, and occasionally from the Minister of Finance. Uh, I'd just like to read into the record what the Minister of Finance just sent me. Randy, if you can blatantly lie, tarnish reputations of elected and unelected individuals with innuendos but no proof, we have no avenue to push back, then this assembly has become a joke and a stage for an opposition puppet show. Disappointing. First of all, uh, if you want to make a point of order, get on your feet. And uh, I ask the Minister of Finance to withdraw and apologize for this text and any others that you may feel inclined to send me off the record. I withdraw and apologize. Go ahead, Kathy. But you see, that's not the end of the story here. Randy wanted to move forward with the proceedings, but do you know who didn't? Jeremy Harris, who could not stop heckling. He appears to have been heckling the speaker, which I don't know how to tell you this, Jeremy, but you're really not supposed to do that. Now, we don't know specifically what Harrison said, but clearly Randy Weeks was not impressed. Just watch this clip. Patent Box Amendment Act 2020. I ask the government house to, to stand and withdraw and apologize for that comment too. I'm not deaf. I'm not. Absolutely. Give her. Mr. J. 
Jeremy Harrison, I hereby name you for disregarding the authority of the chair. Pursuant to Rule 57-2, the member is suspended from the service of the assembly for the remainder of the sitting day. Okay, Kathy. Spicy. Harrison was kicked out for the rest of the day, and then the government just sort of pretended that nothing happened. But after the fact, Randy Weeks shared that he's received hundreds of texts from the SAS party government. And I just want to point out, the precedent's been set here. Randy should probably read those into the record. I'm sure they're going to be fascinating reading. And Scott Moe weighed in in his typical gutless way, saying that the MLAs, quote, text the speaker at their own peril. He took no actual stance at all. He didn't even go as far as to say that the members shouldn't have done it. There was literally no consequence. They're just angry that the NDP is allowed to ask questions about their obvious corruption. They're taking offense to the fact that they're being held accountable. They're just taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from the public coffers, and when you have the audacity to ask them about it, they just clutch their pearls in desperate offense. But because Scott Moe has absolutely no courage at all, all he has to say is, well, I won't speak on behalf of what's appropriate and not appropriate for those two to be communicating. Honestly, it's just pathetic stuff. But this is indicative of a larger problem in Canadian politics and parliamentary politics in general. They get completely hung up on theatrics and we wind up with they get completely hung up on theatrics and we wind up with houses that just yell at one another. I don't even take my classes to the legislature anymore because it's become embarrassing. Members sit on their phones, read at their desks, ignore the proceedings, yell at one another, slam their desks, a bunch of behavior we wouldn't put up with in a grade school classroom, so why do we put up with it from elected officials? But even more than that, how are people not appalled at this? Imagine if you found out that Krista Freeland was sending text messages to Speaker Fergus in the house in the middle of proceedings telling him what to do. Who would be okay with that? Who would say that that was appropriate? The Saskatchewan government is arrogant and they believe themselves to be above the rules and it shows every day. They gotta go.